CDL Practice Test, Texas, General Knowledge, Part 7. Question number 158. It's important to shift gears in order to A. Have good gas mileage. B. Keep the engine warm. C. Ensure coolant reaches the radiator. D. Maintain control of the vehicle. The correct answer is here. D. Maintain control of the vehicle. Explanation. If you have a manual transmission, it's important to shift to keep your engine in the right gear. That way, you can maintain control of your vehicle. You can tell when it's time to shift based on your engine speed, RPMS, or the road speed at which you're driving. Question number 159. What is the required aggregate working load limit of tie-downs? A. Strong enough to lift two times the weight of the cargo. B. Strong enough to lift all the weight of the cargo. C. Strong enough to stop all fore and aft movement of the cargo. D. Strong enough to lift one stroke to the weight of the cargo. The correct answer is here. D. Strong enough to lift one stroke to the weight of the cargo. Explanation. Tie downs are used to prevent cargo from shifting or falling off. The tie downs must be rated, in aggregate, high enough to lift one stroke to the weight of the cargo. One tie down per 10 feet of cargo is required. Minimum of two tie downs. No matter how small the load, use at least two tie downs. These are federal regulations. CDL Handbook, page 33. Inside enclosed trailers, e, g, dry vans, refers, etc. Tie downs may also be required. Note, there are additional rules for securing specialty cargo, e, g, logs, cars, boulders, coils, pipe, shipping containers, etc. These extra rules can be found in the CFR. Title 49 and 93, if your company hauls specialty cargo, your employer will provide extra training. Freshly graduated students aren't normally hired to haul specialty cargo. Question number 160. Which of these is not part of the pre-trip inspection of the engine compartment? A. Worn electrical wiring insulation. B. Condition of hoses. C. Valve clearance. The correct answer is here. C. Valve clearance. Explanation. In step 2, check engine compartment, of the 7 step inspection method, you'll check a number of things such as the condition of the hoses and electrical wiring insulation. However, you won't remove the valve cover to check the valve clearance. Question number 161. How long does it take a typical tractor trailer to clear a single railroad track? A double railroad track? A. It takes 14 seconds to clear a single track and more than 15 seconds to clear a double track. B. It takes 10 seconds to clear a single track and more than 12 seconds to clear a double track. C. It takes 7 seconds to clear a single track and more than 10 seconds to clear a double track. The correct answer is here. A. It takes 14 seconds to clear a single track and more than 15 seconds to clear a double track. Explanation. A typical tractor trailer will take at least 14 seconds to fully clear a single railroad track and more than 15 seconds to fully clear a double track. Question number 162. While driving, ice builds up on your wipers and they no longer clean the windshield you should. A. Stop safely and fix the problem. B. 
Keep driving and spray the windshield with washer fluid. C. Keep driving and turn your defroster on drive slower until you can see again. The correct answer is here. A. Stop safely and fix the problem. Explanation. If your view through the windshield is obscured because your windshield wipers aren't clearing the windshield, pull over as soon as possible and fix the problem. Remember, if you can't see, you can't drive. Question number 163. Escape ramps are A. Used to get out of a burning truck. B. For combination vehicles only. C. Used to stop runaway vehicles. The correct answer is here. C. Used to stop runaway vehicles. Explanation. Escape ramps are located on many steep mountain grades. Escape ramps are built to stop runaway vehicles safely without injuring drivers or passengers. Escape ramps use a long bed of loose, soft material such as gravel to slow a runaway vehicle, sometimes in combination with an upgrade. Question number 166. When checking the bus seats, what are you looking for? A. To see if they have been removed. B. To ensure they are securely fastened to the bus to ensure the seat and back portions are not loose. C. All answers are correct. The correct answer is here. C. All answers are correct. Explanation. The seats must be safe for riders. All seats must be securely fastened to the bus and not lose or missing. Question number 167. In Texas, which of the following are you not allowed to transport in an open truck? A. Sand. B. All of the answers. C. Wood chips. D. Gravel. The correct answer is here. B. All of the answers. Explanation. In Texas, you may not transport any loose material that is capable of blowing or spilling unless a, the truck bed is completely enclosed on all sides and b. Either the load is completely enclosed or the top of the load is covered to prevent any of it from blowing or spilling. Question number 168. Are there any road condition? Other driver, pedestrian, or bicyclist that could be a danger. A. Roadblock. B. Road maintenance. C. Road user. D. Road hazard. The correct answer is here. D. Road hazard. Explanation. A road hazard is anything on the road that presents a danger to you and other drivers. It's important to maintain a speed and following distance that will allow you plenty of time to react to these potential hazards. Question number 169. What is a special condition in which you should downshift your vehicle? A. You should downshift when you are on a road with hills. B. You should downshift when you feel like you are traveling at too fast a speed. C. You should downshift when you are going downhill. D. You should downshift before you start going downhill. The correct answer is here. D. You should downshift before you start going downhill. Explanation. You should always downshift before going downhill to prevent your brakes from overheating and losing braking power.
Question number 170. A 4 inch diamond shaped label on a vehicle indicates a overweight cargo, b a baffled tank, c animals on boat, d hazardous materials. The correct answer is here. D. Hazardous materials. Explanation. All hazardous materials are labeled with a 4 inch diamond shape indicating the class of hazard. Question number 172. The commercial driver's handbook suggests several things to do when you pass a vehicle. Which of these is not one of them? A. At night. Flash your lights from low to high beam and back while you pass the vehicle. B. Constantly blow your horn while passing the vehicle. C. Assume the other driver does not see you. The correct answer is here. B. Constantly blow your horn while passing the vehicle. Explanation. Allow for the possibility that the driver of the vehicle that you wish to pass doesn't know you're there. Make your presence known to the driver. In daytime, tap your horn very lightly. At night, briefly flash your headlights. However, sound a sharp blast on your horn only as a warning to others of danger. Question number 173. What is the first thing you should try to do if your brakes fail while driving downhill? A. Call or radio for help. B. Shut off the engine. C. Get off the road as soon as possible. The correct answer is here. C. Get off the road as soon as possible. Explanation. If your brakes fail while traveling downhill, use an escape ramp if one is available. If not, escape onto an open field or a side road that flattens out or turns uphill. Question number 174. Cargo inspections. A. Not the responsibility of the driver. B. Are only needed if hazardous materials are being hauled. C should be performed after every break you take while driving. The correct answer is here. C. Should be performed after every break you take while driving. Explanation. Recheck the cargo and securing devices as often as necessary during a trip to keep the load secure. You need to inspect again. After you have driven for 3 hours or 150 miles, and after every break you take during driving. Question number 175. How is gross combination weight rating different from gross combination weight? A. GCW is the weight of a single vehicle and load. GCWR is maximum GVW specified by the manufacturer for a single vehicle plus its load. B. GCW is the total weight of a powered unit, plus trailer, S, plus the cargo. GCWR is maximum GVW specified by the manufacturer for a single vehicle plus its load, C. They are the same thing, D. GCW is the total weight of a powered unit, plus trailer, S, plus the cargo. GCWR is maximum GCW specified by the manufacturer for a specific combination of vehicles plus its load. The correct answer is here. D. GCW is the total weight of a powered unit, plus trailer, S, plus the cargo. GCWR is maximum GCW specified by the manufacturer for a specific combination of vehicles plus its load. Explanation. Gross combination weight, GCW, the total weight of a powered unit, plus trailer, S, plus the cargo. Gross combination weight rating, 
GCWR. The maximum GCW specified by the manufacturer for a specific combination of vehicles plus its load. Question number 176. You must park on the side of a level, straight, undivided two-lane road. Where should you place the reflective triangles? A. One about 50 feet to the rear of the vehicle. One about 100 feet to the rear and one about 100 feet in front of the vehicle. B. One within 10 feet of the rear of the vehicle, one about 100 feet to the rear, and one about 200 feet to the rear. C. One within 10 feet of the rear of the vehicle, one about 100 feet to the rear, and one about 100 feet in front of the vehicle. The correct answer is here. C. 1 within 10 feet of the rear of the vehicle, 1 about 100 feet to the rear, and 1 about 100 feet in front of the vehicle. Explanation. This is required by Federal Regulation 49 CFR 392.22. This regulation also specifies where to place warning devices on other types of roadways such as curves, one-way roads, and divided roadways. Question number 177. Which of these statements about cold weather driving is true? A. An engine cannot overheat when the weather is very cold. B. Windshield wash or antifreeze should be used. C. Exhaust system leaks are less dangerous in cold weather. The correct answer is here. B. Windshield washer antifreeze should be used. Explanation. Prevent your windshield from freezing in cold weather. Fill your windshield washer reservoir with a windshield washer antifreeze that is rated for the cold temperatures in which you expect to be driving. Question number 178. If you have a heavy load that is slowing you down on an upgrade, you should. A. Shift into a lower gear. B. Exit the roadway until traffic is lighter. C. Drive on the shoulder so that others can pass you easily. The correct answer is here. A. Shift into a lower gear. Explanation. Trucks with heavy loads are often slower when going uphill. In this situation, keep right and shift into a lower gear for more torque if possible. Question number 179. How do you recover from a drive wheel braking skid? A. Brake harder until you stop. B. Depress the gas pedal. C. Stop braking and come to steer. D. Stop braking and shift gears. The correct answer is here. C. Stop braking and come to steer. Explanation. If your rear wheels lock, they will lose traction and may skid sideways to catch up with your front wheels. To recover from the skid, stop braking and let the rear wheels roll again. The vehicle will start to get back on course, but it may overshoot and start to skid in the opposite direction come to steer to counteract this. Question number 180. If you are going through an underpass at which the road has been repaved recently, A. The vertical clearance may be less than it used to be, B. You should slow down to check the new road surface, C. The repaving won't make any difference. D. You can drive through it faster than you used to. The correct answer is here. A. The vertical clearance may be less than it used to be. Explanation. Don't assume that the vertical clearances shown on signs at bridges and overpasses are correct. 
repaving or packed snow may have reduced the clearances since the signs were posted. Question number 181. Which of these statements is true about other drivers? A. Mail or delivery truck drivers do not pose a hazard. B. Short term or daily rental truck drivers are often not used to the limited vision and pose a hazard. C. Drivers using turn signals can be trusted to turn in the direction they indicate. The correct answer is here. B. Short term or daily rental truck drivers are often not used to the limited vision and pose a hazard. Explanation. A car driver who has never driven a truck before will be unused to a rental truck's size and limited view toward its sides and rear. This lack of truck driving experience makes a rental truck a hazard on the road. Question number 182. When performing a pre-trip inspection, why is it a good idea to do it exactly the same way every time? A. You should not do it the same way every time. This may make you too comfortable in your inspection. B. The law requires you to do it the same way every time. C. Most companies require you to do so. D. You will be less likely to forget something. The correct answer is here. D. You will be less likely to forget something. Explanation. It is important to maintain the same routine every time you preform a pre-trip vehicle inspection, because you are least likely to forget something, especially when it is late at night and or you are working while tired.